This is One on One. The folks with plenty of plenty got to pray all the day. They see with plenty, you show sure got to worry how to keep the devil away. This is One on One at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. It is my honor, my pleasure to introduce first time on One on One. First time. He's uh, Norm Lewis. He's an actor and singer, 2012 nominated for Tony Best Actor in? Porgy and Bess. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, let me ask you, we were just seeing a clip coming in. Right. Uh, you, nine months on Broadway and a few months before that, where? Uh, we were in Boston at ART up at, uh, in Cambridge at the, at, on Harvard's campus. Describe the experience. It was, uh, for me, I mean, going back even for the audition, uh, they, they said, do you want to come in for Porgy and Bess? And I thought, you know, usually they hire someone that had some musical theater for sport in life, that character, but never Porgy. It's always a, a, an opera singer or a classical singer, so I never even dreamed of doing this role. But once I got it, I was very excited because I get to work with uh, Audra McDonald. How good? She was amazing. And she, she, uh, she made me bring my game up because she was, you know, she's such a great team player, but you have to kind of match what she does. And she, she, you know, she's willing to work with you, so I love that. For those who do not know the story of Porgy and Bess, short, the public television reader's digest version. Uh, Porgy and Bess, it's a, about a, a, a guy that's crippled in this uh, catfish row in South Carolina. And uh, it talks about this community of people who are basically a family. And uh, in comes this woman who is addicted to cocaine, and she's also a loose woman. Uh, and the two worlds meet, and somehow she needs my help. I've always admired her. We find each other uh, and love each other for our flaws, and uh, we, it's a beautiful, tragic love story. Mm. When did you know? When did you know that... Um the arts, if you will, and that stage and singing and acting, that this would be your professional life? That's a good question. I, uh, I didn't know for a long, Where'd long time. Where'd you grow up, by the way? I grew up in a small town called Eatonville, Florida. Eatonville, Florida. Eatonville, Florida. What was that like? It's, uh, it was great for me because it was it's a, the first, actually, I'll, I'll make mention of this. This is the, uh, the, the uh, first African-American township uh, ever in the United States. Wait, the yeah. first African American township. It was uh, we were the first to charter the city with uh, with the government, and uh, we after the Emancipation Proclamation, land was given to mm -hmm. slaves to cultivate, and uh, after about 27 years uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation, this group of people decided wow. to make it a township. Yeah, and that's big. Z Zora Neale Hurston, who uh, wrote "Their Eyes Were Watching God," Eatonville is the the town that's mentioned in the book. Yeah, so. Go back to when you knew. So I, I grew up in the church, and my dad was a deacon. My grandfather was a preacher. And so uh, I sang in church, but I didn't know I had a voice. I didn't know I had a gift of singing. Basically, when you joined the church, you just sang. They just needed voices to make a joyful noise, whatever that meant. And uh, then I found out in high school that I had something. Um, a teacher said that I had a nice voice, and then I just kind of grew loving music more. I uh, found that musical theater was great. I found out that classical music was great. I still didn't uh, st study that, though, in college. I studied business in college. You studied business? I studied business. I studied Why? E economics. I, you know, I just wanted you to wanted to be an economist? I wanted to be, actually, I wanted to be a lawyer. I know, it sounds You boring. loved, I heard you had to love the law. I, Did you love the law? I didn't necessarily love the law, <laughs> but I just, I, maybe I love the prestige of it or something like that. Just it sounded cool, I, right? I, yeah, I went, I passed my bar or something. But um, I, uh, I went to college for business, but always kept singing and uh, tipped my toe in the acting world. Always, it was a hobby, it was just a hobby. And then back in the day when Star Search was a big deal, there were these auditions in Orlando uh, where Eatonville is close to, 
and I would go and audition for these things and, or do like different contests or something. And this one particular contest that I happened to win, uh, a judge was in the audience and he was a producer for a cruise ship and he, he asked me if I'd like to sing on the cruise. And I took the job. That was your first big that break? That was my first big break. I had been working in advertising after, after college, been working in advertising for like five years and uh, did this on the side and this guy offered me this opportunity. It's interesting. People have no idea. Like, have you ever, you know, you, you get nominated, right, for mm -hmm. Tony, and you have a degree of success, and you're doing these great things. People will say things like, "I want to do what you do." Right. They have no idea how you do, how you even got to be in a position to do some of the, right? Do they have any idea what that means? No. I, I no. don't mean to be. No, no. Uh, people always ask me, you know, what what advice will you give me, you know, getting into the business? And I just say, be true to who you are. Know who you are because you're going to get a lot of rejection. People are going to say no or going to say that you're not right for something and you're going to hopefully t uh, not take it personally, but you, you kind of do. Um, but just know who you are as a person, but always be prepared, you know, uh, study. Yeah, let me try this one on you. Rejection, mm -hmm. big part of this business, mm -hmm. broadcasting. I've experienced it a fair amount. Right. How about you? Oh, yeah. Now here's my question. A lot. Do you think there's any difference and the rejection that some of us experience, who happen not to be African American, and those who are rejected who happen to be African American, men. Hmm. Is there anything, do you, for you, any different? Because I know why they didn't want me. Right, right. <laughs> I yeah. think I know. Right, right. I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. It just, I guess it depends on the circumstances. Have uh, you, let me try it this one. Okay. Have you ever said to yourself, I wasn't right, they didn't want me for this role in some, some way because I'm black. I've been really blessed at some of the opportunities that I've gotten. I, if it were that case, I wouldn't know it because I've, I've done so much in my career to just be, just to show up. I just showed up and in fact, uh, that was one of the advice that a friend of mine told me that was in the business when they decided to move to New York. He said, go to everything. Do everything. Just go to everything. Is that how everything. you got Les Mis? That's how I got Les Mis. That's what how else? I got uh, Sweeney Todd. That's how I got uh, uh, King Triton. And uh, I was the Little Mermaid's father. Uh, uh, and Disney's the Little Mermaid on So Broadway. how do you go from that to being Kerry Washington's ex-boyfriend on Scandal? I, I <laughs> That was cool. That was really cool. Well, you know what happened? All right, this is what happened. And, and they actually confessed this to me. They came to see Audra because she had done uh, private practice. And she's so, not that cute, huh? Not that attractive? She's, she's not that attractive. She's, no, uh, I didn't and, think so. And really her singing is a little off, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll help her with that. You know, someday uh, she'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> One of I'm these sorry, days. I digress. Go no, ahead. no, no. But uh, they came to see her, you know, to support her. And while they were there, they happened to see this other guy that was standing next to her who was crippled, and it was me. And they didn't know who I was, which is, you know, understandable because I do musical theater. I do theater. And the, in fact, they said, is this guy from Canada? Who is Norm Lewis? I don't know. <laughs> they kept looking in the program. What is has this he done? Is this guy from Canada? Where's, where's what is that from? supposed to mean? Well, they were saying, like, they didn't, I mean, okay. why, is, why have we never seen him? This he, guy's good. He's, he's pretty good. So from that, that was actually my audition. They came to see the show. And they didn't offer it right, right away. They had me come in. And usually, like a normal audition, they have several people come into uh, a building to audition and wait your turn. I was the only person there, and I was there for about two and a half hours going over the lines, and it was like a screen test, basically. Cool and, series, no? Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, gosh, I'm so lucky to be a part of that show. Love it. Hey, try, try this one. I want to give you a chance to talk about this. Okay. A Carnegie Hall concert. Um, very important to you and yeah. very important to the audience who's going to be exposed to it sometime in 14? Uh, 2014, Talk about June. It. Uh, what we're doing is uh, putting together a, a friend of mine uh, by the name of Chapman Roberts. He and I are co-producing this. We are putting together a, a celebration of African-American men in theater. Um, I, the reason why it came to me is because I kept getting a lot of young men African-Americans coming up to me after shows, especially like playing Javert and Les Mis, Sweeney Todd, <laughs> playing King Triton, things like that, um, saying thank you for being in this role. I'm just a guy that's just lucky enough to be a part of this, but obviously it's making an impact on them and hopefully uh, helping them uh, have some sort of dream to be in, in that role instead of just an African-American role uh, on Broadway. Right. And uh, I said, let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate the men who- Who'd you bring in? Well, we're getting, uh, we're getting Sidney Poitier, 
Harry Belafonte. Couldn't get any big name? No, uh, those are the only people <laughs> that, uh, that said yes. Any A-list? A, um, <laughs> Well, we're hoping That's Denzel. Amazing. We're hoping Denzel. Uh, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, we're hoping Denzel. People who have been on Broadway, we're, we're actually, we're talking to Usher, because uh, Usher did uh, Chicago on Broadway. So this anyone is... who's ever touched Broadway, we want to And the to goal celebrate. again? Is to celebrate African-American men uh, who've done theater. Because those who say, oh, performing is great, but way more than that. Well, way more than that. I mean, there's also an impact that, that uh, U.B. Blake has had in the uh, arranging of music. And, and there was a, there's an inter interesting uh, story about one of his songs being from a show that he, he wrote. But Herbert Hoover, uh, I think that, I hope I'm saying the right uh, president, but uh, I'm Just Wild About Harry, that song, that tune, was written by U.B. Blake for another show, but it became a, ca a campaign song, and you know it helped him win. So, amazing stuff. So it kind of has a little political you an interesting thing going life, on. You know that? I am very blessed. I'm doing great things after yeah, this too. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Norm Lewis, actor, singer, uh, not only nominated for a Tony, he is not from Canada. Not from Canada. Uh, we're proud to have him from uh, from the United States. Yeah, exactly. And doing good things. I want to thank you for being with us. Norm. Thank Don't you. Don't let it be the last time. I hope one, not, okay? man. We got another studio over in Lincoln Center. Come visit Can us. Can I okay? come over there? Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. Thanks. Thank you. We'll be back from the New Jersey Performing Arts Center right after this. Stay with us. Thank you, Norm. Yeah, thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, PSENG, the New Jersey Education Association, TD Bank, Josh S. Weston, Cone Resnick, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.